Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to our video today. Our video today is all about a Raspberry Pi 4, turning it into a network Apache storage system. So I did my research. I want to do a lot of projects with Raspberry Pi. That's the reason why I bought this at the very first place. And I found out that we can install Open Media Vault into this uh, Raspberry Pi and turn it into a network attached storage system. Now, beginner tip here, guys. If you're planning to buy your Raspberry Pi, make sure to buy a kit so that you will have a case, you have the heatsink inside, a fan, and a charger or a power adapter because my first time that I bought on my first video about Raspberry Pi, I wasn't able to buy the case. So I need to buy it separately, okay? So make sure to buy those ones. If you have your Raspberry Pi, then you need to buy a memory card, okay? So that we are going to flash um, the Raspberry Pi OS here. I did this one on my first video, but I just want to start from scratch so that everyone who is watching this one, trying to turn Raspberry Pi into a NAS can go ahead and follow the tutorial. So if you have already installed Raspberry Pi, you can jump into the next chapters of this tutorial so that you can go ahead and do it on the other parts of this video. But if you are still a beginner, you can go along with what I'm going to do. And of course, a hard drive. Now this hard drive that I have here, I took it from a laptop, so I need to buy an external case so that it will have a case so that I can uh, place them together, maybe sometime like that or like this, and then it will be fun. A card reader so that we can use that one to connect it to our laptop then a cable to connect it to our network so that we can make it as a NAS. Now, if you have all of these ones ready, let's go ahead and do it on our PC, okay? So first thing we need to do, guys, is download the uh, Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll put the link on the description below. Click on the download tab, then click on Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows. This will start to download. While we're downloading this, you can scroll down and we're going to download the OS for Raspberry Pi. Click that option. We have three options here. Uh, we're not going to use this one because it has additional softwares that we don't need. And uh, we're going to use um, the second one here because it is, uh, has a smaller size. Okay, so just click that one. So let's just wait for that one to finish up. Let's click on show all. The Raspberry Pi imager is already downloaded. And you can post the video if you want to. I'll just shortcut the download for this one so that we can start. So as you can see, it's done, but that will take time depending on the speed of your internet. So you can go ahead and post this video if you want to, and then play it back again if you have already downloaded those options. So I'll open up uh, the imager first so that we can start. So we need to install this one. Just go ahead and go for next. This will be a quick installation process. Finish, launch Raspberry Pi imager. We're good with the Raspberry Pi Imager. We need to extract the OS of Raspberry Pi. Click that and uh, we are going to extract it here. Right click, then extract here. We're just going to wait for this one for a bit. It will be a quick extraction. You can see that there's another file that is present. That's the um, file that's being extracted. Done. Okay, the next thing is make sure that you have your memory card plug into your card reader plug it to your laptop so that we can start flashing the os into the memory card for the raspberry pi back into our computer the imager is ready you go ahead and choose the operating system just go for custom and then we are going to search for the image that we extracted okay this one open then we need to choose the card which we just plugged in earlier so choose there you go it wasn't able to detect at the first place but you know then we can click on write then yes it will delete everything then this will start to write i did a fast forward at this portion because this will take around five to ten minutes i guess so feel free to pause this video if you want to while you are waiting if you are going through the tutorial so that um, i don't want to put much time here while we are writing it to the sd card okay after writing this one to the sd card it will verify this one again so another i guess three to five minutes to wait when it's done this will show up that you're ready you can close this one 
Then, since we are not going to use a monitor and a keyboard attaching it to our Raspberry Pi, we need to go to the SD card that we flash and create an SSH file so that we can connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely. So anywhere here, I'm just looking for a way so that we can go ahead and right click this one. Wait, okay, again, back here. I'll just right click, then go for new. I'll create a text document. I'll name this one as SSH. But the, the thing is we need to remove that uh, .txt. So you go up here, view, then make sure that you have the file uh, extension checked so that we'll be able to edit the txt extension of that file. Here we go, SSH, right click, rename, then we're going to delete that text txt so that by the time that we boot up our Raspberry Pi, we will be able to connect via SSH remotely, okay? Now it's time for us to connect everything else, remove the SD card from our card reader, plug it to our um, Raspberry Pi. Okay, and let's go ahead and assemble everything. Okay, connect our hard drive, connect it to the network, then power up our Raspberry Pi. Look at that, it's cool. Okay, it's time to connect to our Raspberry Pi via our computer. Now we do not know the IP address of this Raspberry Pi. So we need to download a software called Angry IP Scanner. It's a free download so that we can scan the network and try to see which uh, IP address our Raspberry Pi have. So it's a quick uh, download and install, pretty much easy. Okay, download, gotta wait for that to finish up. And now we are doing this one because we, we do not have, uh, we did not connect our Raspberry Pi to a monitor and a keyboard. So we're just going to scan the network, get the IP address that is assigned to our Raspberry Pi, then use another software to connect to it. So next, 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 yep, finish. And we need to put the IP range that we have here. What network am I? To check that one, go to your search menu, type in CMD, press enter. Then type in IP config, press enter again, then you will have it here. I'm connected via wireless. This is the IP that I have, 192.168.180.94. Then you can just change this one with 192.168.180.0. So that you can start scanning at that. And then at the last, the second option here, set that to 254, then start scanning. So while this is scanning, you can see that uh, it will display all the IP address here. Then try to see for something that says Raspberry Pi. So scroll down, scroll down. Um, do we see something here? Raspberry Pi, there you go, I saw something. Uh, that is one for one, 192.168.141. So we are going to use this IP address to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, close that, close this. For us to connect to the Raspberry Pi, we need another software called Puri. It's a free download again, link will be in the description below. Click here, you can download which version you're going to use, 30 or 64. I'll go for 64 because that's the version of my operating system. Then I'll just wait for this one for a bit. Okay. Open it and this is a quick install as well. Next, 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 install, finish. Okay, finish. I'll just open putty. I always use this one using SSH. So putty, then click on putty, then put in the IP address here. 192, the 168, the 180, the 141. And then open, okay? Just go ahead and say yes here. Then you have the login page right away. The username is Pi. The password is Raspberry. That's the default for Raspberry Pi. You can change this one if you want to. Next thing here is make sure that we are updated. So I'll just type in sudo apt update. I'll put all the commands down in the description below so you can check that one out. As well as the reference where I followed this tutorial. Okay, so I'll also put it there. 
Now, at, in this case, it will take some time, around uh, three to five minutes, maybe longer. So I'll just go ahead and fast forward most of the footage here as long as there is nothing that's going to interrupt the steps that we're going to do, okay? So I remove some of the footage because there are no steps there. Uh, this will uh, stop like this one and then you're good to go for the next command. The next command is sudo apt upgrade, okay? So again, this will take time. I think this is around five minutes. So if something appears like this, asking you why and N, just go for why, that means yes, so that you're going to proceed while it's installing things, okay? So again, I'll also cut some of the footage as long as there's no interruption until the terminal appears, okay? So this is where it ends. The next command we're going to do is very long. So I copy pasted this one from the website I'm following. You can also find the tutorial again. I'll put the link on the description below. The link where I follow the tutorial so that you can cope up and at the same time this command as well. So this is what I did. I copied wget this one. Then I'm going to right click copy. Then paste this one into the terminal. All right paste right just press right click and then press enter okay this will take you again another um uh, 10 to 15 minutes so again i'll just come back if uh, it stops on the terminal again so that we can continue okay so just leave it rolling it's time for you to make your coffee and um, just relax wait for it okay after a long wait, um, around 15 minutes or maybe 10, you will have this message that says IP address may change and you will lose connection. And it did, uh, it will show up. If you're going to wait for this one, this will take another five minutes if you're not going to do anything. But um, this connection error will show up. It means to say that the Raspberry Pi restarted. And if you have this message, you can just go ahead and force restart yourself because uh, maybe it just it is just waiting for the Raspberry Pi to run. So what I'm going to do, since I tried to log in back to the 192.168.180.141, it's not connecting to the PuTTY. So we need to scan using the Angry IP scanner again. So we have the same settings. I'll just go ahead and click Start. Then, uh, here we go. Let's try to scroll down. We have, where are you guys? The Raspberry Pi, and it changed to 192.168.180.161. So that's what we're going to use for our PuTTY. I'll open up my PuTTY, then type in 192.168.180.161. Then open. Yes. Login again, Pi then raspberry okay so the next thing we're going to do guys is to access the ip address via the web interface as you can see there that's the ip address 192.168.1.1 the login here is um i think admin yeah admin and open media vault the password is open media vault Okay, login. Hurrah, we are on the dashboard right away. Okay, there you go. So this is a snapshot of our open media vault. Just go ahead and click that small triangle on the upper left corner and you will see shared folders here. But for that, you click on disk and you can see it here we have the 500 gigabyte that is uh, the laptop hard drive that I took. We need to mount that hard drive. So uh, you go ahead and click on the is day in one. Then we need to mount. Click on mount. Okay. Once you click mount, then you can see that mounted yes. Okay. The next thing is go to the shared folders. Then while you're in shared folders, you go ahead and add. Type in the name of the folder. I'll just put it Torogi files. Yeah. 
okay and i'll select the hard drive that we mounted this is where we're going to uh, share the files that's the path and then uh, permissions you can set a lot of permissions here okay i'll just leave it that way comment what's the comment shared files save i'll just go ahead and apply this setting and this will take hmm. okay the next thing we need to do after sharing a file is to go ahead and set up smb cifs there you go click this and then you need to enable this option click on save then it's going to apply the configuration next click on shares then click add we are going to add our shared folder here so drop down click on this um, shared that we need we made earlier then type in a comment any comment you want okay then here just just make it public so um, guests are allowed that's just about it we are going to save this one then as you can see there um, this will show up you need to apply this one again yes okay almost done here all right we can go to my computer and try to check the shared files okay so i'll type in slash slash 192.168.180.161 press enter Ta-da! Torg profiles. There you go. And try to open this. Let's try to create a folder named um, sample. Then open this one. Try to create another file. Let's just say text file. Then sample. Okay, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and try to map. So that every time we're going to open our computer, it's easy to see. So I'll go ahead and right click, then map. Then you can try to change the letter of this drive. We can put it as X, then reconnect on sign in. That's good enough. Finish. Then go to this PC. You will have to your profiles in the IP address. You can see it here. Open that. That's a sample folder we created. And that's just about it, guys. Well, there's a lot more about Open Media Vault as you can see here, but I get you started on how you can make things running with Open Media Vault. So it's up to you to explore from this point to go ahead and do the advanced things with Open Media Vault. I hope you have learned something from this video, guys, and hope to see you in my next video.